Hey GED students, a DJ sent us this problem on the Light and Salt Learning Facebook page, and it's actually from our website, the GED Math Crash Course. It's part of the non-calculator section review. And if you're looking at it going, oh my gosh, this is pretty ugly. I'm gonna have to do this without a calculator. Um, yeah, that's the style of problems on the non-calculator section, and that's why I so frequently tell you guys that if you'd like, you could just skip the entire non-calculator section, just guess it and move on and focus on things that are worth more points. And that's because you have to be pretty competent with a lot of basic math skills in order to handle the uh, non-calculator section. But that's okay. We're going to try it. DJ's clearly working on it. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay. So the first thing that I notice here is that the directions say simplify. Simplify just means perform the indicated operations. So do we have some symbols here telling us to do some operations? We got to go do whatever we can. And indeed, yeah, I see some operations. This is an operation, something to do with a number. We have to take the cube root of this number of negative 27. Here's another operation. This little floating two tells us we have to square the number four. That's something to do. And another operation, this minus between these two tells us that we're subtracting, okay? So whenever you have more than one operation going on, it's important to remember that mathematicians do not necessarily move left to right. We use the order of operations when simplifying. First, we take care of any groupings, then any exponents. And guys, remember exponents includes powers and their opposites, roots or radicals. And then multiplication and its inverse, division. And then finally, our last step is always addition and its inverse, subtraction. So looking for any groupings, um, a radical can be used to form a group. But if I look inside of this radical, there's nothing to do in there. There's no group of numbers in there to work with. It's just one number, negative 27. And so I don't see any groupings here. So I'll go straight to the exponent steps. So notice when I box up four squared, I'm not gonna take the minus with me. Sometimes I'll joke that um, exponents are really weak. They only work on the number, not the sign in front. Um, you would have to use parentheses to include that negative if you wanted the negative to get involved in the squaring. So I'm gonna do the four squared. And remember, radicals are the opposites of powers. And so they are technically part of that exponent steps step. So that is part of our first step as well. Now, since these aren't touching these two uh, ex parts of the expression that I have boxed, I can do them, you know, it doesn't really matter the order. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the easy one first. So what does four squared mean? Four squared means uh, four times itself. Four squared means the number four multiplying two times. So of course, four times four is 16. So I can replace that four squared with the number 16. Now that was the easy part. That's probably not what DJ was stressed about. I bet what was throwing DJ was this part, the cubed root of negative 27. Now you might have been doing exponents and radicals for a while and still haven't gotten to anything as complicated as taking the cube root of a negative number. But this problem's actually a lot easier than it looks. Because remember, what a radical is. It's the inverse or opposite of that power. So a cubed root with a little three here in the check marks, check mark is the opposite of cubing. It's the opposite of the third power. So what I'm basically saying here is just what number, if I raise it to the third power, would give me negative 27? Well, I got a pretty good guess that if I want a negative answer out of it, I probably want to start with a negative number. So the question is just negative what? Now you could easily guess, guys, like I could say, oh, I don't know, maybe negative five. And that's what you're gonna have to do if you don't have your cubes memorized. If you don't know your perfect cubes, well, then you're gonna have to guess and check. But the good news is it won't take too long. Let me show you what I mean. If I were to take negative five and I wanna raise that whole thing to the third power, that would be negative five times negative five times negative five. So negative five times negative five is positive 25. And if I were to times that by another negative five, oh my goodness, let's see, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, negative 125. Oh my gosh, I'm way too big, guys. Five was way too big. Five is not even that big of a number. And that's why I say these cubes are not quite as hard as they would seem because the GED tends to pick smaller numbers because 
cubing can get something so big in a hurry. So if it's not negative five, what is it? I don't know, let's get a little smaller. Let's try, hmm, negative two. Well, is it true that if I were to take negative two and cube it, I would get negative 27? Let's see, negative two times negative two times negative two. So a negative times a negative is positive. And positive four times negative two is negative eight. Okay guys, so <laughs> negative five gave us an answer too big. Negative two gave us an answer too small. It must be somewhere in the middle, and indeed it is. It's negative three that if you take it and you raise it to the third power, you'll get negative 27. Let me prove it to you. Negative three times negative three times negative three. So negative times a negative is a positive. Three times three is nine. And three times negative three, guess what? It's negative 27. So what does all that work mean? It means that the cube root of negative 27 is just simply negative three. Because what number raised to the third power would give me negative 27? Negative three would. All right, now we replaced this part of the expression with something, something simpler. And we re replaced the four squared with something simpler. But it's important not to drop any symbols I don't want to lose the fact that I had a minus here, so I'm going to drop that between them there. So now my new expression is negative 3 minus 16. Now don't make the common error that a lot of students make by confusing what it means to minus. A lot of people will be like, oh, I have negative 3, and I have to take that 16 away from my negative, and they come over here in some side work and do some subtraction and tell me the answer is negative 13. This doesn't make sense to me because of what it means to already be at negative three. Guys, if I'm at negative three, it's like my bank account is already, you know, I'm in debt $3. I'm at three below zero. And now here I am going down another 16. Minus 16 doesn't mean take away my debt. It means go down 16 more or spend 16 more dollars. Guys, if I'm already $3 in the hole and then I spend another $16, my debt's actually gonna accumulate. I'm going to be all the way up to negative 19. So it's not addition, but when two things have the same sign, subtract, and then we're going to minus some more, it feels like addition to most students because we see that accumulating. Okay, so my final answer there is negative 19. Now again, guess and move on. If you feel overwhelmed by this video, if you, this is literally the last thing I work on with my students. Most teachers will teach what they call the basics first, uh, but I don't because there's easier things to master on the GED than all these comp um, computations. I'd rather work on interpreting word problems or doing algebra or doing geometry all day long uh, because Three months invested in those skills gives me a much higher score gain than three months invested here in the non-calculator section. But that being said, if you want to tackle it, I want you to have a fair shot. So if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.